the madness out here, man. You know, I mean, look, this is hell right here. You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna bring it out. Second Ezra chapter nine and verse one. Wow, this is Second Ezra chapter nine and verse number one. He answered me then and said, "Measure thou the time diligently in itself." So look, the Most High through His servants, uh, like He used the, the Ezra the scribe, Ezra the prophet, Ezra the priest. Right? He told him to measure the time diligently. Right? And what do you do with the uh, the measuring stick? You know what, you, you gotta, you gotta, like you say, you gotta measure the time. Our people know how to measure the crack. You know what I'm saying? They know how to weigh the balance, balance out. You know, weigh the drugs out. You know, you know how to put, uh, how much sugar you need to, 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 to make your Kool-Aid. You know what I'm saying? Our people know how to do all things except measure the time. What is the most high referring to? Go ahead. And when thou seest part of the, of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it, it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. So he's talking about him visiting the world in which he made. Right now, how is the Most High going to visit the world? He's going to come, you know, knock on your door and see what you do. You playing 2K, he want to play too? No, the Most High ain't trying to play 2K with you. The Most High is coming back here to send judgment upon this earth. Man. And the way the Most High sends judgment is through death. It's through famine. You know what I'm saying? It's through all types of slaughter that we've seen in the world. You're hearing the wars and rumors of wars, China preparing to, uh, to overtake Taiwan, and that's the judgment of the Lord. How the Most High has got Russia using a, 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 a bombing against Ukraine, that's the judgment of the Lord. What's the, 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 a couple weeks ago, the sister that drove, uh, uh, what's that, 100, 100 miles down, was it Central? La uh, Cienega. Slauson and La Brea. Sister driving 100 miles per hour down Slauson and La Brea and killed six people. A pregnant woman and her little baby. Hey, that's the judgment of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Let's bring this out right quick. Go ahead. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 9, verse 16. The Lord is known by the judgment which he ex executed. Right, so the Most High God, he's known by his judgment in which he executes, man. And the Most High can execute it in many a forms, man, many a ways. They say, what, a hundred ways to die, choose one. Hey, the Most High got more than a hundred. More than a hundred ways of killing you, man. You know what I'm saying? The Most High can smite you down at any point. You, you, you chose to reject the word of the Lord, the Most High can kill you. As soon as you walk away from here, we don't know what's going to happen to none of the people that rejected the word. But ultimately, it's in the hands of the Most High God. Read that one more time from the top. 16. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Right, so we see that, man. The Most High is known by his, by his judgment, man. And a lot of the world, they don't fear the, uh, the name of the Most High anymore. But it's going to come a time where everybody's going to bow down, confess the name of Yahweh, Wah, Yahweh Shai, man. You're going to bow down and, and, and accept it. And you're going to learn to embrace it, especially you heathen. You like to make mockery of the name of the Lord, man. But the Most High has a set time of judgment for all people upon this earth. Let's go back to 2 Ezra chapter 9. This is 2 Ezra chapter 9 and verse number four. No, it's like verse number three. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. Right, so we see in earthquakes and uproars of the people. People protesting here, left and right. You know, women going crazy because they, you know, they they they're not being able to uh, abort their babies anymore. You know what I'm saying? The Roe v. Wade overturning ruling. You know what I'm saying? Hey, look, hey, that, you know, Esau he's trying to preserve his life. That's what it, what it really comes down to. The so-called white man wants to preserve his seed line. He know that the white man is dying off. The white race is dying off. So they're doing everything in their power to keep they uh, they position it here in the earth. But hey, look, it don't matter what you do. Like it say in the book of what Job 27 and 13. What, what, I don't want to, matter of fact, we got we to gotta get it. I don't want to wanna misquote. Yeah, whoever can get it first. Uh, Job 27 and verse 13, man. You know what I'm saying? Because you can preserve your seed all you want to. But hey, look, that would be for the execution of your own people. That's what it would be for. Right? Uh, 27 and verse 13. And then we're going to uh, get that Proverbs 28 and 5. Come. This is Job chapter 27 and verse number 13. Come on, sister. Sister, you got time for the word? 
Come on now, sister. You love your people? Come talk to us. One minute for the Lord. You can't, hey, sister, we don't want a fist pump. All right, we want you to come deal with us. All right. This is Job chapter 27 and verse number 13. This is the portion of a wicked man with God and the heritage of oppressors. This is the heritage of oppressors. Who's oppressing the earth right now, man? You know what I'm saying? Where the, you, you look at the, uh, the animals, man. You look at nature. All of these animals are, are damn near extinct at this damn point. And who's the reason for that, man? You look at the waters, why it's polluted? Why you gotta search for food that says non-GMO? Who's at the head of those things? That's the European man. The devil in the earth, man. The so-called Caucasian people, man. So, hey, look, this is the most highest judgment and execution for your people. Go ahead. Which they shall receive of the Almighty. If his, if his children be multiplied, if your children be multiplied, you're trying to say, you know what, you're trying to promote interracial relationships. You got Serena Williams on the cover of a magazine with her, her white zaddy. You know what I'm saying? You, you're trying to, you know what, they say that the Asian race is the next best thing, so they're trying to get with the Asian woman. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to do everything in their power to preserve your seed. But God said, look, you might be able to preserve it a little bit, overturn the ruling of aborting the children and all that, but what is it going to be for? If his children be multiplied, it is for the soul. What? It is for the soul. The Most High said your children be multiplied is for the sword, man. You know what I'm saying? You done smashed our children's heads up against the ground, cut the womb of the, uh, the Native American woman, took the baby out, started playing soccer with the heads, with the little fetus. Hey, look, we're going we to do that to your children. Man. Let's get the book of Psalms 137 and verse 7 right quick, man. I, I, look, we can, I can't wait to do that, man. You know what I'm saying? I see these heathens every damn day at my job. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, and I just think, it, think about all the things that I want to do to them. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Hey, look, hey, look, they did it to our ancestors. You did it to our people. Hey, look, and it's only a matter of time that the Most High is going to have us judge you other nations, man. Let's bring it out right quick. This is Psalms chapter 137 and verse number 7. Remember, O oh Lord, the children of Edom. Oh, forget about it. Remember, O oh Lord, the children of Edom. We're going to let go of the past. Remember the Holocaust. Remember 9-11. But forget what we did to your ancestors, you, you, you specs and you niggas. Go ahead. Remember, O oh Lord, the children of Edom. Look, God said he's going to remember what the Edomite race did, man. He's going to remember all your crimes. Right? You want to forget about the, the, the woman that uh, uh, executed Emmett Till, right? Right now, that's a big thing going on right now. People are trying to bring forth judgment because that woman's still alive. They're trying to, you know, bring this, bring the uh, uh, Emma Till and his family to justice, but what? They're not even charging this woman. She came out openly admitted, what? That, that she lied about him whistling at her, huh? You know, and they want us to forget about that, but they, but then again, they can go and arrest a German, a, a German Nazi for, for, for something he did to the fake Jews in 1942. They just arrested a 95 year old German Nazi and gave him five years. Just did that. Yeah, he gonna die. You know what I'm saying? But see, that's how you know the white man is, is a hypocrite, man. And the Most High tells us this rock 1 and 29 to be not hypocrites in the sight of men. And you guys have proven yourselves to be hypocrites. This is why the Most High God has to judge you. And look at you, man. You vagabonds in the earth. Psalms 109 and verse 10. You know what I'm saying? You look disgusting. You see the white woman, she trying to look like a thug. You know what I'm saying? They try to take everything of, of Jake and Eve and wickedness. Man. That's crazy, man. Hey, look, all that's coming to an end. Go ahead. In the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. So the white man, was he was there in our ancestors' destruction in 586 B.C. of uh, 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 the Babylonians coming, man. Esau was there saying, destroy it, destroy it, man. Right, go ahead. Even to the foundation thereof. Oh, daughter of Babylon. What? Oh, daughter of Babylon. What does Babel mean? Babel means confusion. Right? And this is the land of confusion. Where's the daughter of ancient Babylon? America. America is the daughter of Babylon. And this is the place of confusion. Because again, you, you walk all up and down Hollywood, no matter where you at, you can see a 45-year-old man, white man, who, who identifies himself as a nine-year-old little girl, and we supposed to be okay with him. Hey, no, that's confusion, man. And all people, all people walking around with homosexuals and lesbians, you get it from the damn white man. Proverbs chapter 28, uh, let me get verse 5. I think it was in uh, Psalms 137, let me finish that. I want to bash these heathens here. Let's finish that real quick. 
Uh, this is Psalms chapter 137 and verse number 8. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. So God said, look, we're going to be happy to reward these modern day Babylonians for their crimes, man. We're going to be happy to destroy, bring destruction upon our enemies, man. The brother brought out a powerful precept earlier. I think it went to, uh, what that, uh, Barak 4? Did you go 4 and 25? Yeah, Baruch 24, uh, 4 and 25? And look, we wait patiently to destroy our enemies, man. Yeah, you know, and they walking to and fro right now. You know what I'm saying? But they, they and they walking on, 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 on soil that has the blood of the indigenous people out here, man. And they walk in proud too. You know, and, and they think to themselves, what? I didn't have nothing to do with what my ancestors did. Yes, you do, bro. You know what I'm saying? Through many a ways. If you look at who you bank with, you know, whether it be Chase, whether it be Wells Fargo, how you doing, Ken? You got time for the word? How you doing? You got time for the word? Hold the momentum. One minute, brother. You know, but nonetheless, the most in many a ways, you, you bank with all of these different companies out here, and they, they used to use slaves as collateral. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter what it is, man. So you've had part, and, and that would make you a, a, a culprit of what your ancestors have done, man. An accessory to what your ancestors have done. You see what I'm saying? So let's go ahead and get that. First number nine. Happy shall he be that take it and dash it thy little ones against the stone. Look, they don't want to read that. And, and look, the Christian church will never read this scripture. You hear what I'm saying? So look, like he said, happy shall he be that taketh thy little ones and dasheth their heads up against the stones. Right, when you look at what they did to the indigenous people, man, it was horrific, man. They used to do these things to our children. And God said, and we are going to be happy to reward them as they've done to us. Man. Happy to take a little white child and, and, and swing him in the air, throw him high in, in the sky, catch him, and then bash his head up against the ground. That's what we're going to be doing, man. Hey, the book of Isaiah 33 and verse 18 said, we're going to be meditating terror, man. We're going to be thinking of all the ways we can destroy the European race, the Arab race. All you races have had, had a hand in destroying our people, man. And we can't wait. And you turning red. I know you are. You know what I'm saying? But we can't wait to do these things, man. You know what I'm saying? All praises be to the most high God. That was the end of verse 9? Okay, come on. Let's get uh, Proverbs 28 and 5. Proverbs chapter 28 and 5. Evil men understand not judgment. Right, so the Bible says that evil men don't understand judgment. You don't understand when the Most High is, is putting you uh, uh, to shame for your sins. You know what I'm saying? You don't understand why the Most High got you strung out. You know what I'm saying? The people that survived that car crash, they, they're not understanding why the Most High allowed that to happen to them. You know what I'm saying? We, I don't know the effects of what took place with some of those people that survived, but I'm sure it was very brutal. But in the Bible says that evil men understand not judgment. Huh? You gotta know that just like the brother was bringing out, man, just because you're able to walk to a pro, you, you coming from work, you know what I'm saying? You're going to go turn up, hang out with your friends, that you think that judgment is, is that the Most High is not gonna judge you for your sins. Hey, that's not true. The Most High can catch up with you anytime, man. You know what I'm saying? Finish that quick. But that, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. But those that seek the Lord, you're going to understand when the Most High is judging. Even from the least of, you know, uh, least of it to the greatest. Whether it was a thought that we might have had that we went off in, and, and the Most High sent judgment at us through plenty of ways, maybe, whether it be financially, you know what I'm saying, you got, you got, you got to suffer at your job, the boss is getting on you, and hey, that's judgment from the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Because even then, like you say in Proverbs 16 and 7, you know, he make it, uh, he that pleaseth the Lord, I'm paraphrasing, you know what I'm saying? The Most High will make your enemies be at peace with you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, give me, I say, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 12, and you hold it, uh, Jeremiah 8, 7, let's get that. This is Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse number 7. Yeah, yeah, the stork the in the heaven, heaven nor for appointed time. So the stork is dealing with the bird, right? The bird knows her appointed times, right? Whether it be she's, she's about to bear a, a, another a, a bird upon the earth, you know she got to make a nest. You know, know when it's about to rain. And I got to get it out of here. You know what I'm saying? The stork knows her appointed times. Go ahead. And the turtle and the crane. And the turtle and the crane. The turtle knows when he got to get in that shell. He got to hide. He don't want to be around nobody. People walking around. Turtle going to hide. He going to get in the shell. Same thing with the crane. The crane is dealing with the horse. And the horse is prepared for battle, right? The horse knows when it's got to take off. You know, it knows that it's, it's prepared for war. It was made to 
How you doing, Ken? You got time for the word? You got time? One minute, brother. One minute. Come on. Come talk to us. You know what I'm saying? So the crane, the crane knows, right? So uh, but go ahead. And the swallow observed the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. See, so all these animals, they know they appointed times. But my people, they do, they do not know the judgment of the Most High God. You know what I'm saying? So we out here to let you know our people know the judgment of the Most High God. It's high time for our people to wake up. You know what I'm saying? Right now they turn in the shoulder. They don't want to hear the word. You know what I'm saying? But look, hey, look, we're going to bring out the word of whether we got to prophesy to the wind. You know what I'm saying? But so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, we out here for y'all, man. Y'all got to wake up and understand who you are in these last days. It's highly important. More, than, more important than any kintinetta you got to go to tonight, any boxing fight that's going on tonight, you know what I'm saying? Y'all gotta hear the word of God. Come on, let's get that in uh, where, where I had you at? Ecclesiastes 9, verse 12. Right? So we're gonna bring out the truth. Go ahead. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 12. For a man also knoweth not in his time as the fishes that are taken in an evil net. Right, so it says, look, man don't know his time. Even as a fish, you out there going fishing, them fishes don't know that they about, about to be cast in the net. You know what I'm saying? That's likewise man. You know what I'm saying? So look, if we, we want to uh, keep the truth hidden, hey look, the most hard can judge you like that, man. You want to hide the truth. Give me that uh, wisdom of Solomon chapter 4 and verse uh, 12. Go ahead. This is Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 15. And verse 16. These are the things that ye shall do. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. What? Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Tell falsehood. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. And then we gotta tell you that the Lord was a so-called black man. Huh? We can't hide that from you. That would be a lie, sister. You understand? So the Bible says, speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. You would be my neighbor. I gotta tell you that this, that the Lord Jesus the Christ was a melanated man. Was a dark skinned man. Hey, look, you gotta be happy to say that. I man, you can't be afraid to tell a white man what Christ really looked like. These other nations, what Christ really looked like. You gotta tell the most high the truth. We're gonna come out here to speak the truth, whether our people like it, accept it, believe it or not. Man. So we're gonna speak ye every man the truth to our neighbor. Go ahead. Execute the judgment of truth. We gotta execute the judgment of truth. You can't shun away, hide from the truth. Hey, that's madness, man. The Most High is not dealing with people that want to hide the truth. Right, go ahead. And peace in your gates. And let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor. And, and to hide the truth from your neighbor would be an evil thing. You see what I'm saying? So look, we're going to come out here and expose the truth. Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. Is it Wisdom in Solomon, chapter 4, verse 12. For the bewitch bewitching of naughtiness doeth obstinate of sure. Things that are honest. Right, so it says the bewitching of naughtiness. Bewitching is like trick, deceit. You know what I'm saying? And what has the white man done? He's deceived us with this image right here. With that, with that, uh, uh, what's that, uh, that gringo image. How you doing, King? You got time for the word of the Most High God? Let me ask you something. What does Jesus look like? What is what is the Bible say? Okay. 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 Let's get, let's bring it out right quick. And, and it, is, it doesn't stop there because if Jesus, according to the Bible, was a dark-skinned man with woolly hair, and, and what was his nationality? His race? Uh, what was his biblical race? Israel, right? So now, if, I'll praise you. If, if he looked like that, what did the rest of the Israelites look like? They looked like him, right? So how do we get this image right here? How did this image come about? Oh, the white devils came about. Right? See? Right, so we got to understand that this images came from a people that don't look like this, right? It came from Diablo, right? Right, let's get, uh, matter of fact, let's get um, Wisdom of Solomon. What's that, 14 and 12? And, and what have you get? Was it? Okay, uh, we was already there. Let's get a song to Solomon 1 and 5. Let's show you an ancestor of Jesus the Christ, right? Let's show you a uh, son King Solomon, right? And he was the son of King David. Let's see what he looked like. Song to Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. I am black. But calmly, 
O ye daughters of Jerusalem. So check this out. So King Solomon said, I am black, but comely. You know what the word comely means? It means attractive, handsome, beautiful. You know what I'm saying? So King Solomon, the first person on record, we didn't hear songs of our people saying, I am black and beautiful. You know what I'm saying? He's saying, O ye daughters of Jerusalem. Go ahead. As the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon, look upon me because I am black, because the sun hath looked upon me. So check this out. So check this out. We stand in the sun so long, we get really dark. Right? You agree? Our melanin kicks in. A lot of us get dark. You get, I mean, you don't know about light. You know, we get a, uh, we don't get a, like say during the winter time, we get a little shade, melanin probably like comes, a little, comes off a little less, you know what I'm saying? But, I mean, we still ultimately, but if you look at yourself, I'm sure some older pictures, you still the same complexion. I look at myself, so I'm, I'm pretty much the same complexion. You know what I'm saying? But in the summertime, we do get a little, a little bit more tent to us. You know what I'm saying? So we see Solomon said, let's get Job chapter 30, uh, verse 30. And then, uh, oh, what you got? Okay, you got you. Okay, Job, give me, uh, give me, uh, no, no, you know what? I want Exodus in chapter 12. No, is it, is it Exodus or is it uh, Numbers? What period? Numbers 12 and 10, right? Come on, I want that one. Because they, they, they kind of expose that pale skin in this chapter, huh? They say it's not a good thing to have, you know. Let's see what, let's go. Uh, uh, 10. Let's bring it. Bring it. Numbers chapter 12, verse 10. And the cloud departed from the tabernacle. And be no, that's Verse 10. So I'm going to give a little context. So, like, like, so this is Moses, his sister Miriam, and his brother uh, Aaron. Right? So now, Miriam spoke against Moses. Which, no, no, no. That's a complete Mary. Uh, so Miriam was the sister of Moses, right? So now something takes place, and the Most High judges Miriam for speaking out of tongue. Right? So check this out. Go ahead. Numbers chapter 12, verse 10. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. So you hear that, brother? Brother, I need you to listen right quick, okay? King, king, king. <laughs> we need you to pay attention right quick, okay? All right, it's important. I want you to hear this, all right? We're going to give you the best message you're going to hear throughout your entire life. You too, sister. We need you to listen. We need you to hear. Huh? Okay. Well, hope, hope. most high will and the spirit will come upon her still. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get the understanding one way or another. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, brother, check this out real quick. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just keep reading. Go ahead. Miriam became leprous. White as snow, and Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alice, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead, a womb the flesh is half the soul. So look, hey, you got Moses saying, look, lay not this sin upon us, man. Let her let, let her not as, uh, be as one dead. So when you walk around with that pale skin, hey, you look as one as dead. You know what I'm saying? That's what you look like according to the Bible. Man. And, and again, the Most High used Moses' arm to show what complexion Moses was. Told Moses what? To put your hand in your bosom. And it came out as, as uh, what did he say? What was the word he used? Uh, white as snow, and it came out leprous. That's leprosy. You know what I'm saying? And then he told him he put it back in his uh, bosom, popped it out again, and it said his, his hand became as his other flesh. What is his other flesh? His his true and natural complexion. So it's not natural for you to walk around here. Because I mean, look at it. Who's the only race of people that don't have melanin? Even when you look at the Asian people, in their beginning stages, they had melanin. They was real dark skin. But what? During Alexander the Great's rule, they tried to they tried to create a Euro Asian state. You know what I'm saying? So they they were trying to mingle their seed with the Asian people. Man, that's why they became a little light. You know what I'm saying? But ultimately, every race except the European 
was a dark star in people, remember that, right? Uh, let's get some more. You had something else? Oh, you want to continue that? Oh, well, we'll just continue on the numbers and stuff. Are you going to go with the other one? Verse 12, let her not be as one is dead, of whom the flesh is half to soon. When the when he cometh out of his mother's womb. Right, so when uh, Miriam spoke against Moses, the Most High stripped her of her melon, and Moses said, "Let her not be as one that is dead." So if you don't have that melon, and you look like a dead man. And you look at somebody who has passed. You ever seen a dead body before? Their pigment is, is kind of slow. It's pasty. You know what I'm saying? So they don't look the same. You know what I'm saying? So it's very natural for us to be dark skinned And when you look, just I mean, scientifically. You know what I'm saying? You know, you've never, I'm sure, quite sure, you've never seen two white people have a dark skinned child. Right? I, I mean, that can't be proven. Even you have a lot of uh, teachers and scholars and people that, you know, operate in science, they teach and know that life started in uh, the interiors of Africa, right? And on, on the continent of Africa. You know what I'm saying? So we got to understand that we were the original people upon this earth. And, and, and that's who your lineage comes from. You come from the original people. You know what I'm saying? And, and the chosen people that the Most High dealt with was Abraham. And Abraham, the Most High promised him uh, his seed would be great in the earth. And we are descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So you have heard you've heard the term Israelite before, King? Oh, you say it's down on pressure. Okay, so how much do you know about it? Like, uh, what did you learn? So yeah, that, that's going into what Christ was. Christ was a, a Israelite from the tribe of Judah, right? And so-called African Americans would be from that same tribe. When you look historically, where the, uh, the the tribe of Judah fled from, where they was living in Africa, in, in the uh, west sides of Africa for you know a period of time, and you'll see where uh, it was a split between the twelve tribes. So you had the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, right? So-called blacks, Jamaicans, Haitians come from the southern kingdom. The so-called Hispanic, uh, Native American, uh, indigenous people, they come from the northern kingdom. Right, so now, uh, let, let me get, um, what do I want, uh, uh, Ezekiel 7 and 21 real quick, give me a revelation to it now. Because, yes, you got that already? I'll bring that up, right? This is Revelation chapter 2 and verse number 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. So Christ right here is talking to his people, the Jews. Upon any time that Christ was... Uh, dealing in the earth in the Bible that we see, he only dealt with his own people. He didn't deal with no other nation of people. So the red letter right here, Christ is speaking to his people. He said, I know thy works and thy poverty. Because the real Jews were oppressed by the Romans during his time. And they would be oppressed up until his second coming. Right, go ahead. But thou art rich. Why are the real Jews rich? Because the promises of God was given unto them. The Israelites would inherit the kingdom of God and be the rulers of it. And all nations would be subject unto the Israelites in the kingdom of heaven. Right, go ahead. I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. So there's a people walking around the earth have been claiming themselves to be the Jews for quite some time. And that's the people that we see living in Israel. But they were mandated to be put in that land in 1948 by the British uh, 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 mandate. Yeah, well, I mean, when you go uh, historically and you look at... Yeah, well, they actually come from, uh, well, I have the, uh, the 13 tribe book. This is written by a white man. This is not by us. It's called 13 tribe, right? By a white, uh, uh, so-called Jewish man, Arthur Coastal, right? And he talks about how his people came from the likes of uh, Poland, came from Germany, came from Russia. They do not, uh, uh, they were not the original people of the land of Israel. You know what I'm saying? So that's not a biased book by any means. You know what I'm saying? They know that uh, the people living in Israel today are not the real Jews. You know what I'm saying? So it's various documents and proof that shows uh, uh, them coming from you know other places and us being the original people of that of that land. 
A absolutely. And the Bible says that. We, we look at, uh, the Most High says it's not going to be peace in that land until the real Jews come back. And there was a man by the name of Abdul who called Nessim, the uh, second king of Egypt. He said uh, there will never be a peace in the land of Israel because the Jews uh, left the land and they came back white. You see what I'm saying? So it's not, that land, it's not going to be peace throughout all the earth until we come back to our home. So how is that going to take place? It's going to take place by our people repenting uh, our sins and coming back and serving the most high together in unison. Uh -huh. Church, uh, yeah, let's get that real quick. Uh, Matthew chapter 18 and verse 20. Congregate, we don't, uh, right now, brothers are really congregate. Um, Brothers is headed up by another church Baltimore, Maryland. Yeah, I mean, the brothers are spread out all over. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, this will be the camp right now. And we can talk to the brothers about, you know, give that further uh, details. Yeah, the basic. Check this out, okay? Deuteronomy 28, 9, 15. Uh, this is Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse number 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So the Most High said, look, if you don't hearken unto my voice, all these curses are going to overtake you. Meaning they're going to come upon you and they're going to destroy you, right? We're going to read some of these curses. It's going to help us identify who the Israelites are, right? Verse 16. Verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. So when you look historically, even going back to the 1960s, in every major city in America, who's living in the worst conditions? In the projects, in the slums, in the barrios, in the ghettos. You know what I'm saying? Uh, nickel and diamonds, trying to get by. Who's living in the worst areas? Melanated people, specifically who? Black people, right? Blacks and Hispanics, right? We living in the worst conditions. Come on, come on. You look at the reservations in which they living upon. The ones from India. Look, I brother, you ever been to Artesia? They got businesses flourishing over there. You go to the country. Okay, well, I mean, yeah, they probably live in impoverished conditions, but that would be under their own hand. Because who controls them? You know what I'm saying? So, uh oh, you know, I'm talking, the most high is talking. But okay, I, I, hear, I see what you're trying to come from, the angle you're trying to come from. Right? So, we're going to identify through process of elimination who the Israelites are. God said these people will be cursed in the city and cursed in the field. When you look historically, uh, uh, America got 50% of its wealth off of cotton. Who was picking cotton? Us, we, right? You look at the sugar fields, you know what I'm saying, the strawberry fields, we was working in those fields, even to this day, right? They make a lot of prisoners, in the, uh, at one particular prison in Louisiana, they make those prisoners pick cotton as a punishment of their crime, still to this day. You know what I'm saying? So that's a curse God put upon the Israelites. This is Moses talking to the Israelites. If you disobey God's word, this is what's going to happen to you, right? Verse 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. They're in slavery. Was our sons and daughters given to another race of people? Absolutely. They used to separate our families. Send the father to Alabama, the little girl, she's going to get sent to Georgia. The mother's going to stay in Virginia. The brother, the son is going to, he's going to go to uh, uh, Mississippi. They used to, and they still divide our families to this day. They had the, uh, our Hispanic brothers and sisters in cages. So, you know, uh, the ICE, deporting these, the separating the families, deporting the parents. Huh? Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, the FEMA camps. They was throwing them in actual cages. You know what I'm saying? We talk about CPS. That's a curse. They're still able to take our children from us at any point in time. There were some viral videos of, of, of a black couple having their children being taken from them. No reason at all. You know what I'm saying? So that's a curse God put upon the Israelites. But we can say that happened to our ancestors, right? You see what I'm saying? Give me uh, verse 37. Verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a Bible among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. So we are called derogatory terms 
amongst every race of people, no matter where we go. In Japan, they call us kun. You know what kun means? It means nigga. Kun. Kun. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's a, you know an Asian word for nigga. You know what I'm saying? You talk about Africa. And, and, you know, because that's one of the uh, misconceptions that we have is that we were African. But, you know, we have similar features in some regards, but we were not, we were never African. You know what I'm saying? But in Africa, they call us a cotton. Cotton picking nick. That's what they call us. You see what I'm saying? So we are called derogatory terms by all races, of Africa, no matter where we go. You see what I'm saying? So that, that's what it means when it says, thou shalt be on astonishment. Astonishment is like, you know, they looking back at us just like, what? You know, they watching uh, black people on, on TV, having a big old melee fighting one another. You know what I'm saying? They look at us as an astonishment, even on, on, uh, on the level of sports. White people, these owners, they watching their, their black slaves, rich slaves, jumping high in the sky for them, making them billions of dollars. They're an astonishment unto the, uh, unto the uh, European man. And then it said, and then a proverb. A proverb was like a saying. Like say, all niggas eat chicken. All niggas drink forks. You know what I'm saying? All niggas love water. That's, that's a proverb. You get what I'm saying? What's some of the proverbs of the Hispanic uh, brothers and sisters? They got, they, you know, they got, they, you know, you know they, call, they call them what? They, they, all, all Mexicans still have cows. You know what I'm saying? They, they come up weird stuff, man. Right? Yeah, you see that? Taco head. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. They, they always say that. Yeah, you can put eight of them in one car. Hey, that's a proverb, man. And then it said a byword. A byword is being called something out of your God-given nationality. Like, they, you know, they call us a, a color. You know what I'm saying? Or, or Negro. You know? That's, that's, you know, that's a derogatory term. According to the Bible. Because God said we was going to leave. You, know, you got something? Okay, yeah, okay. We'll, we'll hold that. Okay, we'll get that. Give me uh, Isaiah 65 and verse 15. Uh, keep, uh, keep Drop down to verse, uh, we finished at 37? Matter of fact, I wanna, we still on the 37 right now. I wanna uh, give this Isaiah 65. Watch this right quick, King. Cause who you are, according to the Bible, is an Israelite. You're not black or African American, King. Isaiah chapter 65 and 15. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. For the Lord God shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. The Israelites were called the servants of the Most High God. So because we rebelled against him, look, he, he allowed these other nations to give us names. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and your name is a precious thing, huh? Like it talks about in Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 1. You know what I'm saying? Your name is, is above uh, uh, more than gold, huh? So we gotta have honor to our name. We come from Israel, a man named Israel, and, and the word Israel means prince of power. That's what that means. You know what I'm saying? But we've taken on, uh, uh, upon ourselves these European names. You know what I'm saying? We call it Demetrius, you know, Darnell. You know, we coming up with uh, Ladarius. What does those names mean? You know what I'm saying? Like, what is, what is the meaning? We, we call ourselves out the name. They don't, they don't even have no damn meaning. You know what I'm saying? We, we proud to have a, a, the Johnson family vacation. You know what I'm saying? Or, or uh, you know, uh, uh, Tomlinson. You know, so we'd be proud to have our little reunions, our family reunions with those like, yeah, we come from the, from the Davis family. You know what I'm saying? Those is European names, man. Slave, slave names, you know what I'm saying? So we take it on the names of our enemies, man. So, but that's a curse that God put upon who? His people, the Israelites, for rebelling against his, uh, and if I give me Jeremiah 17 and 4, drop down to verse uh, 43. Verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high and thou shalt come down very low. So who's above us right now? Huh? When you look at the, the poverty line or the uh, the income between all different races, who's at the very bottom? Blacks and Hispanics. It's a, it's a vast difference in how much the white man make, the Asian man make, and our people make. And it, it's, it's like, it's damn near embarrassing. I said, they said the average income I believe for black people is like 24,000. The white man and the Asian people, they well above 100,000. That's crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? So the stranger that is within me shall get up above us very high. They are, they are, they're the head. We're at the bottom of everything. You know what I'm saying? They don't never pass any uh, uh, bills for us, but they quit to do something for the Asian people. You know what I'm saying? They quit to give money to the Ukrainians. 
they quick to give money to uh, to all other ethnic groups outside of so-called blacks and Latinos, man. You know what I'm saying? That's, so that's the stranger getting above us very high, right? Uh, give me verse uh, 40. Uh, no, we'll, we'll, we'll drop that. Give me verse 48. I want to get to this video. Okay? Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. So you look, uh, how, how are we serving our enemies? Our people like to shop at the McDonald's or like to eat there. So we're serving our enemies in hunger. We're going to their businesses, their Italian restaurants going to fancy places, we going to Chick-fil-A. Our people don't own none of those establishments. So we go into our enemies in hunger, and it said in thirst, right? Uh, we, we drink the Dasani water, what waters we got out here? We got the we got the purified drinking water, crystal geyser. Hey, look it up, Google it, who, who owns those, those companies, man? It ain't our people. And then it said in nakedness, we shopping at Forever 21, we going to the Nike store, we going to the Jordan brand Gucci, you know what I'm saying, Fenty, we going to all these other places that is owned by Europeans, even if our people have their own business, the material still comes from overseas, from another race of people. You know what I'm saying, so we serving our enemies in want of all things, right, go ahead. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Brother, we got the uh, depictions up here right now. They got, we got yokes of iron upon our necks. And I'm sure you've seen movies like Roots, right, King? You've seen 12 Years a Slave, Django, uh, Antebellum. All these slave movies, Alice, that just came out. You know what I'm saying? They, they, didn't, they didn't put the yokes of iron upon our necks, man. Historically, this has never happened to a, a, a whole nation of people outside of so-called blacks, uh, Hispanics, and Native Americans, man. So look, that's a curse God put upon us. The Jewish man cannot say that this happened to them as a race of people. At all. They can't say that. You know what I'm saying? But our people can. So we know we are the people of God, man. And I'm going to show you how we're going to get up out of this real soon. Let's get uh, verse 54. Verse 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother. And so we, at one point in time, we had love for our people. It was nothing for us to come through and help you. Brother, how you doing? But now we got an evil eye towards one another. We looking, we sizing each other up. What you looking at, man? Where you from? You step on my sneakers, it's a problem, man. You know what I'm saying? We got that boys in the hood spirit. We got the Bloods against the Crips, you know, Hoover, 60s. You know what I'm saying? We got all these different sets and gangs and streets we represent. You know what I'm saying? That's us having an evil eye to one towards another. Right, and what else, though? And toward the wife of his bosom. Listen to our music. We, we you know, us saying derogatory terms towards our women. That's something that the white man used to do to our woman. He used to call them wenches. You know what I'm saying? Call them, call, he used to call, just call our, our women bees and hoes. You know what I'm saying? But now we doing it. And we doing it gladly. We'll take that five million contract that we didn't sign for and you know, uh, uh, spout off these derogatory terms towards our women. That's a curse. You don't hear no other race of people doing that like the, uh, you know, the white man is not really doing it. He's trying to be like Jake on, on some level. You know what I'm saying? But the majority of them is not doing it. You see what I'm saying? So what else? Though? And toward the remnant of his children, which he shall be. How many of so-called black people, so-called Latinos, grew up without their fathers in the household? I know I did. You know what I'm saying? I know a lot of brothers that did as well. I know brothers that ain't never even met their father before, never even seen him. You know what I'm saying? So that's a curse God put upon our people. Who, I mean, because who, they, they make jokes about us not having our fathers in the household. In movies, you know what I'm saying, TV shows, you know what I'm saying, in comics, you know what I'm saying, you, you playing against somebody online in the video game, you playing against a white boy, they just gonna make money. Yeah, you, that's why you grew up, you, you whoop an ass, and then just, that's why you grew up without your father, nigga. You know what I'm saying, they do stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? But that's a curse God put upon the Israelites, brother. I'm going to get you one more curse, and I'm going to show you what you got to do in order to receive salvation. Man. You see what I'm saying? I'll get this one quick. 68? Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So look, Moses telling the Israelites, look, the Lord's going to bring you back into Egypt again, but this time with ships. Like I said earlier, you don't need a ship to get from Israel to Egypt. You know what I'm saying? Because they walked out of the land of Egypt into the land of Israel. You see what I'm saying? So now, what is he referring to right here? Because look at the back of the dollar bill, what you see. You see a pyramid. Right where the, uh, the, the beginnings of pyramids built and created in ancient Egypt. 
you see the all skin eye on the back of the dollar bill. And that's an ancient Egyptian occultic symbol. And the white man uses that because why? This is a modern day Egypt. Give me uh, Revelation chapter 11 and verse 8 right quick. We're going to show you this is a spiritual place that is called Egypt and Sodom and Gomorrah. This is that place that we're living in right now. But go ahead and finish it. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. He said, look, the way I'm telling you that you're going to go into this captivity, that's how it's going to happen. And we know through prophecy, through archaeology, and through history, we are the Israelites according to the Bible. Go ahead. Thou shalt see it no more again. He promised us, look, if we keep the commandments, we're not going to see oppression and captivity no more. But if we don't, we won't see captivity again. And we've definitely seen captivity here in America. Right, go ahead. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Unto your friends. Unto your enemies. Unto your enemies. For bond men and bond women. And no man shall buy you. We were sold to our enemies. The European man, the Asian man, the Arab man, the African man, all those other nations, they are enemies according to the Bible. Man. You know what I'm saying? That's what God called them. We didn't, I didn't say that. I didn't make that up. God said that they are enemies, man. And they said we were sold to them, man. Master Johnson bought a little young buck. That's what they used to call us for $300. You know what I'm saying? Master Henry. Oh, yeah, he's got some water. Master Henry bought that little girl for $500. You know what I'm saying? That's what they did to our They put them on auction blocks. Then it said that no man shall buy you many. No man shall redeem you. We've had Malcolm X tribe, Marcus Garvey, uh, uh, Harriet Tubman, Martin Luther King. We've had all these people come through trying to redeem us out of this captivity, and they just can't. Man. Why? Because it's going to be by the power of the Most High God, man. Through his servants, the prophets of Israel, man. You see what I'm saying? So bring this out for me, right? Revelation 11 and 8. Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which is which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. You know how many indigenous people lost their lives here in America at the hands of the white man as they uh, dishing out this monkey pox right now? They, used to, they gave smallpox and a blanket to the indigenous people. Over 77 million Native Americans lost their lives by the hand of the so-called white man. Our dead bodies have lied in the street, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. What place is more, has produced more freaks and homosexuals than America, man? This was the beginning of gay pride parades. And now you've seen it all over the world, man. This is the modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. Where you got like, what, over 50 something identities, gender identities these days? You gotta pronounce they, you gotta give their pronouns, the they, the him, the her, the he, the it, the she. Hey, this is the land of confusion right here, man. And this is also, then it said Sodom and Egypt. Why did it reference Egypt spiritually? Because this is that, like uh, ancient Egypt and the oppression that our ancestors faced, we face that same oppression over here in America, huh? You know what I'm saying? But the Most High said he's gonna destroy this modern day Egypt, huh? And he's gonna deliver us. So you gotta know how you gonna get delivered, huh? Yeah, he is doing it right now to a degree by having brothers out here laboring for the word of the Most High God, man. Huh? Build and tell you who you are, man. Huh? So now we're trying to restore you uh, uh, unto the spirit of the Most High God. Do you know, you know some of the commandments, brother? What's some of the commandments? Uh, honor thy mother, thy father. Keep the Sabbath day holy. What's the, what, what's the Sabbath day, kid? Saturday, okay. That's the seventh day of the week. God said he made heaven and earth in six days, and upon the seventh day he rested. Huh? You look at the calendar, Saturday is the seventh day of the week. So this is a day of rest, man. Huh? You know what you can and can't do upon the seventh day? You can't buy, you can't sell, you can't cook. You got to do the work to the Lord or you got to rest, man. Huh? Y'all got those precepts for that? Uh, Exodus 31, 16. You got something? Yeah, we'll check on what you got. Oh, okay, bring that out, go ahead. Uh, oh, oh, you got it. Uh, uh, okay. This is Exodus chapter 31 and verse 16. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. So I said the Israelites shall keep the Sabbath throughout the generations. As long as we are appropriating upon this earth, we got to keep the Sabbath day holy. 
right? And God said, if you don't keep my commandments, hey, look, the curses is going to be upon you. And what we see amongst our people right now, cursed in the city. Brothers bugged out over here, man, talking to themselves, hollering. Brothers hollering in your face not that long ago before you got here. Like, I mean, come on, it's madness out here, bro. We cursed in the city. You know what I'm saying? So this is a commandment that God gave to our people. Because look, other nations ain't separate what we suffer. You see what I'm saying? God's, if, if the white man break the Sabbath day, God is not judging him. Because the law wasn't given to him. The law was only given to the Israelites. So only the Israelites will have to deal with the punishment of breaking God's laws. For instance, like if you look at, if you go, Father, you have children? Yeah, if your children, if, if say your son, right? Say you got a son. And he gets in trouble at school with his friends doing some stuff he wasn't supposed to do. When you come to that school, are you going to whoop him or, and his friends? Or are you just going to whoop your son? You gonna whoop his friends, brother? <laughs> hey, man, you be diligent, though. Man. You, be, you know? <laughs> no, 